this roll that Ezekiel had to eat. Generally, a scroll had writing on one side. Mm -hmm. It unrolled and it opened and there was writing on one side of the paper. But the word of God tells us that this roll had writing on both sides. Mm -hmm. And what God said to him was, eat all of it. All In it. other words, you have to know it, you have to take it, and it has to become part of you. Right? Yes. Now, if we go back in history just a little bit, Ezekiel was a priest, mm -hmm. and he was taken captive from Judah and taken into Babylon. Mm -hmm. So he was in captivity when God spoke to him, mm -hmm. when God began to reveal to him the things that were going to come to pass. Now, I want to take a look at another person who had a similar experience. Very quickly, let's turn over to Revelation. Mm. Book of Revelation is the very last one. Amen. The one that we try to avoid. We will go to oh. chapter 10. Oh. <laughs> Revelation chapter 10, starting at verse 8 as well. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which stands upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, and it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Mm -hmm. Just the same as Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. And I took a little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Mm -hmm. Now this is John, John the Apostle, John the Revelator, whatever you want to call John. John was a privileged man because when Jesus died, he had the privilege of taking care of Jesus' mother. Mm -hmm. For 50 some years, he took her into his home and took care of her, and John suffered lots and lots of persecution. In fact, according to the history books, he's one of the only original apostles that did not suffer a crazy, violent death. Mm -hmm. But now John went through some issues before God began to reveal to him the things that were to come. Mm -hmm. John was always going to jail. He was always in trouble. And history tells us that he was literally boiled in hot oil mm -hmm. and did not die. Mm -hmm. So since he did not die, the people of the land sent him to an island called Patmos, mm -hmm. which is where he was in a dungeon when he received the revelation that we now read as the last book of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, just like Ezekiel, who was cast into Babylon, mm -hmm. pulled away from his family, he had to go through some things yes. in order to carry the word. Mm -hmm. right. Now, there's another prophet, a prophet by the name of Hosea. Mm -hmm. Hosea was an upright man of God, a man who loved God, who wanted to do right. And God took this man who probably would have loved to have a nice wife. And he told him to marry a whore, mm -hmm. marry a prostitute. Mm -hmm. When he married the prostitute, he had to go through persecution. I'm sure people talked about him. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that woman got on his nerves. I'm sure she was disobedient. Mm -hmm. But he had to go through it for a reason. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel had to go through it for a reason. John had to go through it for That's a reason. Right. And you have to go through it My for God. a reason. Come on. In Lord Jesus. Real prophets. Mm -hmm. deal with persecution come on. Come it on. comes with being a sacrifice and not just normal persecution come on. not just people talking about come you on. but sometimes you have to be drugged through the mud That's in on. order to get revelation from yeah. God amen amen Amen. Being a prophet mm. is not glamorous. No. You do not get to change your name and wear pink and go to big conferences and all that good stuff. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It doesn't work that way. You don't get to divorce who you want to and oh. have people say, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Come on. My Lord. That is not the call of a prophet. Television has lied to us. Lied. The church has lied to us. Yes. So I want to tell you the truth today. Tell it. Mm, come on. Because when you're called, you don't have a choice. No. We're past the Ten Commandments. We're past <laughs> thou shalt not kill. Okay? Uh -huh. We're all mature in here. Come on. We know that if you kill somebody, you're going to hell. But prophets, if you are disobedient, you will wake up in hell. Amen. Oh, you don't have a choice That's but to right. be obedient. That's right. Mm. Come on. Yes. And this is the word that we have got to hold on to. It's time out for playing. Yes. It's time out for expecting God to do all this stuff. God does not have an a la carte menu. I tell the church all the time. Come on. Well, God, I'm going to give you $100 and I want you to pay my bill. Mm. Come on. God, I'm going to throw $1,000 and I want you to give me a husband. Mm. Well, God, you know, if I give my pastor a suit and I believe you're going to give me no, a car. It's, it's just not. He doesn't have a no. barter system. Come on. Oh. 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 My God. Hey, tell him. True. So we got to understand my, my, my. the truth. What does it really mean to be a prophet? Let's flip back to it. <laughs> <laughs> my Lord. Mm. 
Now, Ezekiel went through a lot of stuff. And he was an upright man of God. And at one time, he had a wife. And his wife passed away. And he really wanted to mourn her the way that the tradition said to mourn her. But he didn't have time to do that. Because sometimes when you're a prophet, you have to turn away yeah. from family yeah. and friends. And yeah. You have to do what God has called you to do. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah. I have two little people at home, and I love them. They are my heart. But sometimes God says you have to go. And guess what? I have to trust God. Yeah. I have to trust God and my husband to take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. Come on. And if I didn't trust God, I wouldn't trust my husband. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He would feed them cake for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to turn away. Jesus said, listen, if you don't give up your mother and your father, mm -hmm. you're not worthy of me. Come on. Amen. So when we come to conferences like this, it is not to get a word to get us excited and send us home with a bunch of lies. That's right. This time is to come and be activated so that you can be productive when you yes, get along. Yes, that's right. Amen. 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 Prophets don't have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. Come on. Prophets don't talk a lot on the phone. Come on. Come on. Say it. Prophets don't get a whole lot of invitations. Oh. You will get invited once. Come on. That's and right. if you say what God has told you to you say, you probably won't get invited. Yeah. That's back, right. And it's okay. That's I want somebody to find me in the Word of God. A prophet that went here and went there and was popular. And they said, oh, please bring them back. No. Well, well. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember reading about one. In fact, they didn't like the word that they had to give. That's right. <laughs> Prophets are sent. They're sent by God and yes. oftentimes not received. Yes. It is okay. It's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> one of the things I love about the book of Ezekiel is that he gives us insight into what he actually had to go through. And I just want to give you an overview of some things. And I'm just going to challenge you in the next few weeks to read the entire book of Ezekiel mm -hmm. if you haven't before. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel had to lay on one side mm -hmm. of his body, in his own dome, mm -hmm. in his own perspiration, mm -hmm. with his head hurting, hungry. He had to lay on one side of his body for over a year. All as a symbol mm -hmm. of the word that he was going to give. Yes. Then when he thought he was going to have relief, God had him lay on the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For many, many, many months. Mm -hmm. And suffer as a symbol of what he would prophesy to Israel. Mm -hmm. He had to eat forbidden things that made him sick. Mm -hmm. He had to go places where he did not want to go. He had to prophesy to his friends. He came up between Jeremiah and before Daniel. Mm -hmm. And while all of this is going on, he already knew that it was going to be a scary path. These are the things that he had to go through. Mm -hmm. Prophets are strange, mm -hmm. according to the world, because prophets have to live out what they are going to That's right. say. Yes. That's right. And the reason is so that you can feel the way that God feels. Yes. Come on. A prophet, in order to be a mouthpiece of God, has got to feel the heart of God. Yes. So when people get up and say, oh, God is going to bless us with houses and cars, I immediately have an issue. Mm -hmm. I immediately throw up my Baptist finger, and I feel like taping out the roof. Ah, my God. Because that's not the heart of God. <laughs> the heart of God will not allow you to mm -hmm. prophesy material possessions to people Come when on. they are on their way to Come heaven. On. Come on here. It's not the heart of God. That's the right. heart of God will not allow you to sit broken over and in pain when you know that you can pray a prayer of healing and they will be healed. My yes. God. Yes. But we're too afraid to do what the Bible says to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember one day a woman of God said something to me that was so simple, but it was so profane. Come on. She said, how do we know that we can raise the dead unless we go and try? That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Unless somebody dies and you lay hands on them, you can never activate the word of God that's in you. That's Come right. On. How do you know that somebody can be healed when you lay hands on them unless they're sick and you lay hands on them? Mm -hmm. We're too afraid to do what God has said to do. Mm -hmm. How do you know if you can prophesy unless you open your mouth and allow God to feel? Amen.